Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Me, and um, in today's uh, tutorial, we're going to be looking at the mesh deformer. Uh, we're going to be looking at um, how it can be used, how it be useful, how it can optimize our work. So let's have a look at our scene quick. Then what I've got here is uh, some Mo text that I've converted into an editable uh, poly object. Um, if we change our display mode, you can see it's quite heavy. Now, if I was to select this object and go into point mode, to shift these points around, I could use a soft selection or something like that. But because of the amount of points, it's going to be pretty cumbersome to uh, sort of work with. And um, the mesh deformer can help with this. So let's go back into our normal ob uh, object mode. What I've done is I've created a cage for this object and this is what it looks like it it started life as a box and I basically just uh, subdivided it and tweaked some points just so it um, it surrounds our high poly object so that's the cage that's in place there so if we go to our deformer panel here and then choose mesh what we want to do is, I'll just hide this cage for a second, we want to make this uh, mesh deformer a child of the um, high poly object that we want to deform with the low res object. So we've made that a child there. As you can see down in the uh, attrib attributes menu, it's asking for a cage. Now I've created one here, so if we drag this cage into this field here, not much has happened, but it's in there. Uh, uh, in this advanced drop down what we want to do is turn this external thing to surface that basically means that any uh, say we had a bit of our high poly mesh sticking out of the cage it will still take that into account if this is set to surface you usually want that on to be honest so that's all set to service and then we press initialize as you can see our cage has gone wireframe um, it's added a compositing tag so it's uh, added that and a display tag as well and it's basically just telling it to be lines and that's why the cage disappeared um, so now this high poly mesh is now tied to this cage so what does that really mean well if we select our cage and go into point mode um, I'm going to choose the rectangle selection and make sure that only select visible elements is off. Um, so if I grab this part of the cage and now move it, you can see it's actually deforming our, our high poly shape. So it means that I can make, I can translate the movement of these three points into something far more dramatic on our high poly mesh which excuse me which may be useful um, I may want this to be up here I may want to squash this lot up uh, I may want to I don't know grab that and push it inwards but you can see it's having a, a real good effect on our text there for not much work you're getting a lot out of this for moving one point Obviously, if you wanted a better fall off between this point and this point, you would subdivide your mesh a little bit more, maybe to get a little bit more control. It's basically like an FFD box, but um, you're dictating what you want the shape to be, um, which is one use for the the uh, mesh deformer. So I'm just going to undo all that, and we can leave that. Oh, we can leave that in its current state. Now, what could be another use for this? Well, I've set up another scene to, uh, I think it was this one, yeah. What I've got here is I've got a landscape object. I've just whacked a lovely green material on it. And I've got a sphere primitive here. So on the landscape, what I'm going to do is uh, go to simulation tags and add a collider body. And then to the sphere tag, I'm going to go to simulation um, and add a soft body 
Now if we just hit play on this, you can see the ball falls. It acts like a soft body should. Uh, it deforms and it's sliding off the landscape because it's not got enough friction. And everything looks well and good. Things seem to be running fine. Now, what's happening with the soft body tag is it's looking at the interaction between not only the soft body of the ball and the landscape and the interactions between them, but in between each of these polys, there's springs that tell how um, how the object should act and uh, basically calculates how to be a soft body. And because of that, you'd assume that the more polygons, the more calculations. So let's test, test that theory. Go to our sphere, we'll up the segments to, I don't know, say 55. Now you can see the mesh is a lot heavier on this sphere now. So let's press play and see what happens. Lot slower. Frame rate's a lot slower. Now it's hit the floor. It's got a lot more polys to calculate those interactions. And you can see it's a lot slower. And this is also something the uh, the mesh deformer can help out with. So if we go back to our digital meat scene. Um, now if I try and actually grab the high poly mesh and move it, you'll notice that the axis, uh, axis moves, but not much else. Because this is now tied to this cage, you have to move the cage. So if I move the cage up, I can do this, like this. Move that up there. What I'm going to do is uh, actually let's just dump another landscape object in there because it's quick and it's rough and ready. I'll just move this, go to my top view, make sure I'm centered. Yeah, that's lovely. That'll do. So we've got a landscape object there. Um, let's have a look at this. Probably does don't need that many segments for what we're doing. Um, now, just like the ball in the other scene, um, the more polygons it had, the slower it, will, it was calculating. Now, if you look at this mesh, you can see what a nightmare that would be for this. So that's why I made this mesh so heavy, just to just to show you. So if I go to the landscape, let's, let's make the peak a lot more dramatic. Um, let's make this a lot wider as well. Oh, let's crank that up. We're probably looking at the 2,500 mark there. Okay, so we've got something big enough now. Let's whack this peak up as well, so we can deform our object. Okay, so onto this uh, landscape, we can add a collider body. Now, we need to add a soft body to our, our mesh. Again, because the High poly mesh is being controlled by this cage now. The soft body needs to go on the cage. So if we right click on the cage, go down to simulation tag, soft body. Um, and let's just play this and see what happens. Very quick. Now, you can see that it's not bending too much there. So what I could do is go to the mesh, remove this cage. Um, actually, let's restore. All right. So what do I want to do? Um, okay, if I remove that cage, what's going on here? Oh yeah, that's right. It's because our um, digital meat has has gone back to its. Uh, original location so I'll just line this up again quick it's not too big of a deal yeah that's fine that'll do oh, and we need to do it that way as well by the looks of things okay so it's back in there okay so if I grab this cage now and uh, let's see, I can take off these display tags as well now because it'll add them again when I re-add it. Uh, cage, go to poly mode, select all the polys, go down to subdivide, 
um, and I can subdivide it by one. There we go. There seems to be quite a lot of subdivisions there, but we'll see how it runs. Go back to our mesh, drag the cage in. It's on surface. We'll initialize that again. Um, okay, so our cage has still got the soft body tag on it. We can bring our oh, landscape back. Let's take off these lines. Just make it a little bit more visible. You, you can hide this cage as well, actually. Let's see how this reacts. Here you go. Very nice and bouncy. But obviously, if I was trying to do that kind of animation on a mesh this heavy, you could expect Cinema 4D to crash. Um, actually, let's the shape set to automatic. Let's set it to moving mesh. So I'll rewind back to the beginning before I do that. Might get a better result. Oh, and also this collider thing as well. We should probably set this to a static mesh. There we go, much nicer. Right, I think the reason for this was if I if I go back to the landscape and set that back to automatic, we should get a weird result like we were before. Yeah, you can see that there's a furrow here that this text should definitely be in. When the shape set to automatic, it's basically looking for the most optimized way to sort of cover the mesh. So in actual fact, what it's doing is from this peak to this peak, it's putting a collider, which is given as this slope here, which isn't correct. If it's something like a box or something like that, that kind of um, automatic shape would work. But in this instance, uh, it's best to put it on static mesh. Because basically what it does is it makes a uh, collision the same shape as this mesh. Um, and it just knows that it's static and it's not going to move. So we can sort of um, not worry about that calculation. But as you can see, it works a lot better. On a very high mesh, we're getting some nice bouncy animations out of that. So that's how you'd use the mesh to uh, drive a high poly animation with a low poly cage. Now, is there another use for this? Yes, there is. So, I've got another scene set up here. Uh, I think it's this one, yep. So, let's go through this. Right, I've got a cage, which is this object. You can see that the um, mesh isn't that heavy, so let's hide that. And then we've got our high resolution mesh, which is this sphere with a lot of subdivision. Okay. Um, in fact, we could even go a little bit more crazy and lob that in a subdivision. Hoo-hoo! Yep, yeah, that's nice and mental. Okay, so that's very high, that. So, what we can do is, let's get our cage back. Let's hide this for a minute. So this is our cage. We're going to... Oh, it's already in there. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So if we go to our mesh, grab our cage and lob it in. Brilliant. So the cage is in there now. And we can initialize that. So this is our uh, this is our cage here. I'm just going to... Uh, change this display method to this so we can see what we're doing quick. Now, you can also use this um, low-res cage to drive a high-res model with the pose morph tag as well. So if we go to our cage, right-click, go to character tags, go to pose morph, and what would this dialog comes up here. Um, we want to drive points for the purposes of this. So basically you've got base pose, you've got your, you've got your base pose here, and then you Right, so if I select points and select a load of a whole, whole lot and add a pose, it basically locks this state into pose zero. And then we've got pose one here. And this is where I can start affecting things. So if I select my live selection tool, I don't know, grab some of these points here um, and drag these out like so. 
and maybe drag some of these points out here. It should. Yeah. So we've got the strength here. So it's basically mixing between these uh, two poses on the cage. So that's fine. Let's go back to object mode. Should still work. Yep. Now we can effectively hide this cage now and because it's attached to our high poly object it means that when I pull this slider up it will affect the high poly object so you can actually have uh, poses on a on a low res object have those um, uh, poses translated to the high poly object and obviously if I hide this quickly you can see the low poly oh, omit that from rendering as well so this is oh <laughs> dear me I, don't, I think that's been made unrenderable yes, let's just yeah so obviously that is the low poly and that's what it looks like rendered not very pretty Um, and if we unhide our high poly model, you can see it's a lot smoother. It's got some, a lot more definition to it. So there's just a few of the ways that you can use the um, mesh deformer. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, don't forget to check out my uh, page, uh, uh, digitalmeet.uk. And there's also a Facebook page. That's facebook.com, digitalmeet3d. And on my Twitter as well. That's also digitalmeet3d. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.